This video by Dan David and Conrad Winnell looks at Peter T. Leeson's book, Anarchy Unbound. When most people think of anarchy, they think of the strong plundering the weak for personal gain. But Leeson describes how this is usually not the case. Most people agree with Hobbes' assertion that life in an anarchic state of nature will be solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short, and that the government is necessary to protect their life, liberty, and property. Leeson disagrees with Hobbes. Looking to history, Leeson points to several instances where order existed without the structure of a formal government. Leeson looks to pre-colonial Africa as an example as how one would protect themselves from violence if they are weaker and less mobile than those who look to plunder them in an anarchic state. African producers in the interior demanded credit and tributes from traveling middlemen in order to reduce the middlemen's incentive to plunder and violently steal from them. These producers also produced at subsistence so that when those stronger than them came to trade, there would be little stocked away for these travelers to consider stealing. Leeson also looks to the maritime marauding in the 18th and 19th centuries on how the plunderer and the plundered would deal with mutually establishing property rights before the use of violence. Captured ships would give a portion of their cargo to the capturer in lieu of both sides fighting and assuming the higher cost of damaged ships and lost lives. Because both sides look to lower their own private costs, they both reduce the overall social cost of this interaction. So what's the point here? Leeson paints a picture that, even with the threat of violence, order can arise in an anarchic state. But what about when there aren't any laws at all? And what if the people of two parties really do hate each other? Won't this inevitably lead to rampant violence? Leeson points us to the Anglo-Scottish border in the 16th century, where he argues that order arose even without government legislation. On the border, a system of criminal law was developed through self-governance called the Leges Martiarum, which Leeson referred to as the Laws of Lawlessness. These laws regulated everything from killing and bodily harm, theft and seeking revenge, to things like farming practices and crossing the border without permission. One such custom was Man Boat, which forced a person convicted of killing another across the border to pay the victim's family or enter into servitude for the family. Leeson argues that, while barbaric, the system was effective and that it made a punishment a benefit for the family. Other rules such as hot trot arose, where a person whose goods were stolen is allowed to chase the thief over the border in order to get their things back, just as long as they declared to the foreign townspeople that they were in trod. Cold trod was similar, but it involved any trod taking place within a week after the theft. This all helped to establish the difference between justified killing and revenge. But even without violence, how can trade happen between diverse groups of people in the first place since we tend to avoid those that are unlike ourselves? Although Leeson's explanation is relatively long, his answer is relatively simple. People that are socially distant, or in other words, aren't very culturally similar, will adopt the customs and behavior of the other group in order to be perceived as legitimate. In pre-colonial Africa, this manifested itself in their relationships to authority, land practices, and religious practices and associations. So we've taken a look at Leeson's book, but what conclusions can we draw? It's important to note that Leeson doesn't argue that anarchy is a perfect system, or even that it's preferable. This point is to inform others that self-governance can work more effectively than we might think. Leeson provides the histories of pre-colonial Africa, the Anglo-Scottish border, and maritime trade as examples of times where systems of self-governance didn't devolve into complete disorder and mayhem, even with a clear and present threat of violence. Anarchist or not, it's tough to say that Leeson doesn't make a convincing argument. Created using Powtoon.